Uh, we've got joining Hilda Flavia Nakabuye. We have Dominica Lasota. We have Sim Bilal, and we have Kaylin Cruz. Now, from indigenous nations to Ukraine, the people, they're rising up against the tyranny of big oil and gas, especially young folks. In 2018, inspired by the March for Our Lives protests by young folks in the U.S., a little Swedish girl stood in front of her parliament with the sign reading, School Strikes for Climate. Within months, Greta Thunberg was joined by young people across the world striking mm -hmm. from school each Friday. The climate strike movement is one of the most inspiring movements of our lifetimes. And with us today, we've got three of its leaders on three different continents. That's the kind of coalition, the global action it's going to take to make this globe worth inhabiting. So please welcome again, Sim Bilal and Kaylin Cruz of Youth Climate Strike LA, Dominica Lasota of Fridays for Future in Poland, and Hilda Flavia Nakabuye, founder of Fridays for Future Uganda. Welcome everybody. Hey, how y'all doing? What's up, brother? <laughs> what's, up? what's up? Hi, everyone. Oh, I mean, look, I was, I was excited to share the screen with, you know, the Hulk and Adam McKay and Meryl Street, but I'm not going to lie, y'all uh, really moved me even more. So oh, thanks, bro. Submitted. thank you for, for the work that you are all doing. Uh, we're going to move through this with some, I'm going to try to manage the, the traffic flow a little bit. So I want to start with Dominica and Hilda first. Uh, we were just talking with Adam about his feelings, his response to these 80,000 people showing up around the world in climate protests uh, in France with holding up signs saying, look up you know, at the reality of the climate rally. I, I heard y'all were speakers. What was it like? Uh, you were supporting from where you were. What did you see where you are? Give me the view from Uganda first, from Poland. Uh, how is it, how's it going? How's it feeling? Okay. Yep. Hilda, I said you want to go first, first. about, yeah, say yeah, about yeah. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's go with Hilda first from from a from a Uganda perspective, and then we'll move uh, to to a Poland perspective. Hilda, how's it okay. going? Okay, thank you so much, Virginia. Um, well, I attended the climate march in Paris last Saturday, and it was very big. It was something that I've never seen before because you cannot organize like that in Uganda, and such uh, mobilization uh, groups of people over 80,000 80, people were in France. Marching for the climate, this was incredible. This is nothing I've ever seen before. Uh, the power, the energy of the people, it was so big. And that is when I believed that the, the power of the people is stronger than the people in power. Mm, the power of the people is stronger than the people in power. That's beautiful. You were, you were a poet as well, Yilda? That was I just like pulled <laughs> off really soon. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um, Dominica, can you tell us uh, about your perspective on this action from, from where you're standing and, and sitting? Yeah, 100%. I mean, we've, we've held that we have been working on the Stop ECOP campaign um, to stop the longest pipeline in the world now being built by the Total Energy in Uganda and Tanzania for some time now. And mm -hmm. I also plan to, to go to Paris to join Hilda, but I, on the other hand, was here in Poland and we're so stopped by the fossil fuel war that is happening in Ukraine and working on hosting refugees here in, in Warsaw and Poland and also helping in the evacuations of our Ukrainian friends from Fridays for Future Ukraine. Um, and to me, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's to me, it's so powerful, so hopeful to see the movement in France really like rising up to, to oppose what Total is doing and what injustice it is committing and in uh, Uganda and Tanzania and all over the world. But at the same time, you know, I'm so outraged because we are facing yet again another senseless fossil fuel war in Ukraine. Uh, and I'm outraged that every single day around $800 million are still being paid into Putin's pocket by European countries for all fossil fuels and driving this destruction forward. And, you, you know, here pushing 2 million refugees into uh, to, to seek refuge in, in Poland. And it is... Uh, they all claim that they stand up in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Um, but at the same time, you know, all of those money flows uh, still to Russia, to the oligarchs, to the companies there who drive the fossil fuel war machine that we are now seeing the destructive effects mm -hmm. of. So I've been 
I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've been trying to source hope from, from my friends, from Hilda, from Arina and Ilias, who are the Ukrainian activists that had to escape and, and go to Poland and to Germany. But really, I'm also just outraged to see the scale of destruction that the fossil fuel industry is capable of, of committing and still driving. I'm, uh, I'm, re- I'm impressed with the language choices I've heard so far. These fossil fuel wars, the power of the people is greater than people in power. Uh, so thank you both for so eloquently sharing your perspectives on this recent action. Uh, I want to jump to another continent. Sim, uh, you were part of the Just Look Up action in LA. Can you tell us what that scene was like? Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. We had a variety of different uh, coalitions um, in uh, Los Angeles that are focused on environmental solutions and you know addressing the climate crisis and um, holding mm-hmm. California elected officials accountable. Uh, but it, it was absolutely powerful. Uh, we shut we shut down um, City National Bank uh, the morning. They didn't know that we were coming. Just rolled up some drums and you know had some chanting. It, it was mm-hmm. incredibly powerful and amazing. Um, but that is how the action turned out. Um, Great. Uh, and, and Kaylin, why don't you tap in here as well? Um, what are some of these strikes, you know, in, in your context? What is the target of the strike? What is the ask or the demand uh, with respect to fossil fuels, teachers, uh, and, and money? Oh, God. Um, I mean, our strikes, like, it ranges from a lot of different, um, I mean, we target a lot of different people, especially like in California, we're seen as this progressive state. But what people like actually don't know is that California is like really big into the fossil fuel um, industry and like it's, um, CTA, like they were number two in fossil fuel here. Like they, um, they invested like five billion dollars. Um, and then we have banks like here in California who are contributors to like deforestation and uh, a bunch of other like. <laughs> um, they contribute to a bunch of like other stuff that's harming the environment and people as well. Uh, so I mean that's really something that we focus on in the strikes. Yeah. Our demands are usually uh, sorry. <laughs> Our demands are usually just like uh, sorry. Uh, they're like focused on divestment. Yeah. So right now we have a strike coming up on March twenty fifth. Uh, we're calling on the CTA, so California State California's Teacher Association. Uh, to support the CalSTRS and CalPERS divestment. They have mm. well over $30 billion in the fossil fuel industry. Um, they have millions of dollars in shares in Russian state-owned oil companies. So, you know, California teachers, their pensions are being used to fund this war in Ukraine. Um, it's, it's, you know, this thing stretches across borders. It's being used to fund the West Wind Pipeline, you know, and, and it's also being used to fund, you know, drilling in our backyard. Um, and I live, like, by Inglewood, we have oil fields everywhere in California. You know, teachers are California teachers. Unfortunately, their money is being used to fund these things. You know, that's again the the analysis of, of where power sits is really sophisticated and, and beautiful to see. I think if someone is still teaching right now after everything that schools have been through with COVID, with the racial uprisings, like they're committed, you know, to 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 children. They're committed to the future, uh, and so I hope it's disappointing for them to discover. That their, that their own money that's trying to secure their future is undermining the very people who they've devoted their lives to. That's an inconsistency that must be yeah. resolved. So I applaud you, you know, on, on pushing for that. Thank you. Uh, this, this total pipeline, I want to kind of close on understanding there, there is a thread that connects so many of these struggles, these nations, whether it's Ukraine, Uganda, et cetera. Um, can you talk about what is going on with the, the Chinese pipeline that's connecting through, as we heard earlier, through Uganda, through Tunisia. Uh, and, and what are you demanding of Total in terms of the big actions that we saw last week in Paris? Uh, thank you. Well, Uganda is a country where this oil pipeline, the East African crude oil pipeline is going to be built. And it will be starting from Uganda's, uh, Uganda's um, district called Hoima through Lake Victoria, Benson to a port in uh, Tanzania called Tanga. And this pipeline will be 1,445 kilometer long. It will be the world's longest heated oil pipeline. And it will be constructed by Total, which is a French company. The oil pipeline has come at a time when the world is shifting from fossil fuels to renewable energy. 
while developed countries like France are turning to renewable energy, poor countries like Uganda, with the help of corporations from developed countries, are forced to see a future in fossil fuels, mm -hmm. and yet this future doesn't exist. So this project poses very grave risks to the people and to nature worldwide. And in my home village, people are already displaced. Their incomes and livelihoods are affected. It has unacceptable rates to water, resources, biodiversity, natural habitats, and the like. Over 500 chimpanzees will be displaced. Elephants will be displaced. And this is a time where our biodiversity as Ugandans is greatly extincting. Climate catastrophes are worsening and Total is aiming at unlocking a new source of carbon emissions that will either prove financially unviable or produce unacceptable climate harm. Over 100,000 people are being displaced by this project. 400 villages, both in Uganda and Tanzania, are being displaced. About a third of this pipeline will be built on Lake Victoria Benson. Mm. We know that this is the biggest freshwater body in Africa but also the second fresh, biggest freshwater body in the world. Over 40 million lives depend on this. This is a very big uh, asset for us. And in case of an oil spill, this will be like a suicide mission. Yeah. Uh, an estimated 34.3 million metric tons of carbon is expected to be produced per year by this pipeline. And this is to ridiculously undermine the efforts of reducing global emissions to combat climate change. Total stopped people in my country from using their land for agriculture, which was being acquired to develop the pipeline, even before compensation. Amid this non-compensation, starvation and the climate crisis came the displacement, but also COVID-19, leaving many people impoverished, especially women and children. And each day that comes by in Uganda has its own struggles from floods, droughts, lake landslides, rising temperatures, diseases, and the like. What Uganda really needs is protecting and preserving biodiversity. We need renewable energy technologies that will provide clean jobs to people. And all this is happening. So I was in Paris to speak on behalf of the people who are already displaced by the eco project and also people whose land has been taken as a result of this selfish project. And this weekend, I am here to tell each and everyone about the eco project because this is a disastrous project. I am here to speak for the large groups of Eastern chimpanzees, African elephants, birds, insects that have nowhere to go because of their habitat has been taken away and severely affected by the eco. I'm here to speak of the to speak for the children in Uganda who are suffering climate change induced hunger. I'm here to inform you that the oil spills from ECOP pose a particular worrying risk for further devastating human impacts. It is disheartening to see developed countries like France funding new oil pipelines in Africa while investing in renewable energy in their own countries. The climate crisis was not caused by the fresh waters in Lake Victoria, not the mountain gorillas, not Africans themselves, but by burning fossil fuel from global North companies such as Total. We Ugandans aspire to develop, but not at the expense of our lives. Yeah. We are not against our country's development, but we need sustainable development that will benefit everyone, even future generations. We need development that does not negatively affect the elephants people love to see in Africa. We know for the fact that all oil producing countries, especially in Africa, are suffering untold environmental challenges. And we do not want to take the same route. We are farmers and our lives depend on it. We too dream of having clean energies, clean cities for a sustainable future. But the eco project will affect us. It will affect nations. It will affect the entire world. And we, you, especially because we have uh, the most of our lives ahead. We can't be in this mess. We Thank deserve you, a safe Hilda. and Thank healthy you planet. just paused, but I want to use that pause because I understand, Dominica, you're losing power. Um, thank you for hanging in with us. Is there anything else you want to say before we close this? Um, I'll give you a shot first. Yeah, I mean, I think I, the, the question that goes in my head for some days recently is, you know, how many bombs must fall 
how many thousands of communities need to be displaced, how many ecosystems must be completely broken for us to finally realize that the world that is governed by oil, gas, and coal only means destruction. Our governments claim that those fossil fuels can bring about energy safety, they bring about development, they bring about growth. This means nothing. Safety, care, healthy and, and stable life can, cannot be guaranteed by the tools of destruction which fossil fuels are. And so I'm asking them and I'm asking the politicians in Poland, the politicians, I'll be asking that with, with our delegation of Ukrainian and Polish activists going to Brussels next week for the European Council summit, we'll be asking them how many bombs, how many, how many more thousands of communities, homes must be completely vanished and, and disappeared from, from this earth for us to finally free ourselves from, from this toxic, toxic, toxic relationship with fossil fuels. Dominica, thank you so very much. Hilda, Hilda, thank you so much, very much. Sim and Kaylin, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for fighting for all of our futures. Uh, I wanna remind people of an action that you can support and join this upcoming Friday, March 25th. Go to fridaysforfuture.org slash March 25, March numbers two and five to support the effort to get the California Teachers Association to divest from destroying the world of the students they so love. Um, I also want to encourage people to support this effort to stop the ECOP pipeline. That's gonna be the longest one in the world. You can visit the website stopeacop.net. That is stopeacop.net. You've been tuning in to wonderful, inspiring, uh, seemingly boundless energy uh, from the next generation of folks ensuring that there will be next generations of folks. Uh, so thank you all so much for joining. And, and I say that not just to my fellow panelists just now, but to you. Yeah, you right there, I'm talking just to you because we've been here for almost two hours and I wanna thank you for joining. We started out talking about how everything from 9-11 to the killings of indigenous peoples to the invasion of Ukraine, that they all had this one thing in common, that they could only have happened with the help of big oil and our dependence on this destructive force to try to create a future, which is by necessity oxymoronic. And as the world is uniting against Putin, we need to understand that Putin is the face of big oil in all of its devastating possibilities. So the movement to drill, baby drill, is like an IRL don't look up movement from that film that we celebrate and use to inspire us in real life. And the movement of indigenous wisdom rising and the movement of renewable energy and storytelling that humanizes each other, that's the just look up alliance. Again, use that hashtag, check it out, amplify it. Uh, check out the Twitter accounts. We got just look up alliance on Instagram, we got Look Up Alliance without the just on Twitter. You can follow both of those and engage with both of those. Mark Ruffalo was on fire. He came with it. He came with it, helping us remember that we have a responsibility to each other, that the power of our art and our money can do good, especially when we combine them. Melina and Chief Namox grounded us in the urgency of the moment for Indigenous people and our opportunity to ensure that there are no more dirty banks. Three main demands. Number one, Royal Bank of Canada, pull out of the CGL pipeline. Number two, Royal Bank of Canada, uphold and respect the rights of indigenous people. Number three, Royal Bank of Canada, stop financing fossil fuel extraction, which is exacerbating climate change. Which by the way, just like if you think about the math on that, like the wrath of the math, it's a terrible investment. It's a terrible investment in long-term return, it just doesn't make sense. Invest in something that is renewable and regenerative and accretive. You know, I could, I could speak your financial language too. And, you, and you're throwing good money after bad. And in some cases, bad money after bad. So fix that. Get on the right side of not just history, but the future. So you can be a part of it too. Keep making money. Then a wider lens, how the opposite of Putin and Royal Bank of Canada and big oil we talked about how that's grounded in indigenous wisdom, in 
being in awe of and in relationship to all life around us. Svitlana from Ukraine spoke so passionately about herself as a Ukrainian and the need to stand with Ukraine in many ways and how the invasion of Ukraine is powered by big oil. Bill McKibben gave us a vision for President Biden, something that doesn't depend on the great Senator from West Virginia, a path to empower Europe with heat pumps to no longer depend on oil and gas from Russia. These heat pumps will be a massive jolt for the US economy and all Biden needs to do is have the courage to do it. So let's holla at our boy and get him to do what we know he can and certainly should do. We spent time today talking about how we need to be less individualistic and more collaborative in our movements. I was struck by these climate activists, not only what they're doing on the subject of climate, but how the networks they built to help save this planet and the people on it, they've activated to help save each other from conflict zones that are live right now, using those networks to get people out of harm's way of missiles and bombs dropping on them. Adam McKay, Meryl Streep, what can I say? I don't hang out with Meryl Streep every Saturday, but today was a very, very good day. And it was really wonderful to see them rising in these movements, sharing their awakening. And there's no one's fully woke, but we are all waking up and we can all wake up a bit more and using the power again of money and art to change the world. Dominica, Sim, Kale, Hilda, thank you for giving us the greatest hope of all, to fight for the future, to fight for ourselves, and to stop this total pipeline. Totally. It's been an amazing day. I have lots of thanks to get Gru. So many people helped pull this off using their talent to bring this stream, help us all see how we could make the world better for ourselves. Thank you to our ASL translators, Kazen Maddox and Crystal Butler. Thank you to all of our guest speakers. Thank you to all of our producers, Act TV, Avaz, Jay Ponte, and a huge thanks to you, the viewer, the participant, the tweeter, the hashtag, the story resharer. Thank you for your attention. That most, most precious and most controllable resource of all, regardless of how much land you got, how much money you don't have, we have the power to choose where we put our minds attention to. So thank you for sharing your power with us. Climate change is a global problem, but it's one we can solve together. We've got the power to do it. Uh, and on me, I I'm Bevertunde, and it's been my distinct pleasure to do this. I I'm doing this because I uh, believe that we have made some terrible decisions and I know we can make better ones. A big mission in my life is for all of us to interpret this word citizen as a verb, not a legalistic border between peoples, but an opportunity for us to actually flex our power as the people, uh, which is greater than the people with power. We heard so beautifully from Uganda today on that score. So citizen as verb is, is what we're all trying to do here, to show up and participate in ways we can, to build relationships with ourselves, with others in the planet around us, and recognize the myth that we are separate from each other or from the trees and the wind and the waters that power us to understand power and all the ways we can use it financially, artistically, creatively, and to do this to benefit the collective, not just our individual selves. Because when we only think about our individual selves, we ensure the death of our collective self. And we are highly dependent on that because interdependence is the key to all life. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I am gonna have a very delayed lunch. Uh, and for all the technical challenges that we smoothly roll through, I want to thank all those minions in the cloud uh, for helping us pull this off so very much. Remember, just look up and then let's walk toward the world we want to live in. Thank you. <laughs>